at long last the CAA, our governing body here in the UK, have finally set out the drone regulations going forward into 2026 and of course onwards. There are some pretty interesting changes. One of them is pretty good. One of them is absolutely horrendous in my opinion, but ultimately I've got all of my notes. This is not going to be a full comprehensive video, but ultimately this is going to be the main points that I have noted with the new rules. So what I'm going to do is go through them. And of course you can decide for yourself what I'm going to explain in this video is going to be good or bad. And it goes without saying, if you're not from the UK, these rules are not going to mean a huge amount to you. So this video maybe isn't going to be for you, or you can stick around to listen to what our governing body has to say. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here in the UK, our drone regulations do come to an end at the end of 2025. And there was some framework or guidance that was sort of put out earlier on in the year to establish exactly what the recommendations the CAA have made to the Department for Transport in terms of what they think should be implemented for 2026. OK, so in this video, I'm going to give you a brief rundown of what exactly has changed. Now, any person that's watching this video, I'm going to just naturally assume that you have a degree of knowledge as to the drone regulations as it currently stands okay so I'm going to sort of talk about the changes rather than this being a full in-depth video of every single little thing so the first change is of course the operator ID now the old rules pretty much stipulated that any drone with a camera uh, okay that wasn't considered a toy would require an operator ID now that has now completely changed to the fact that that now every single drone that is over 100 grams which is pretty much going to be everything regardless of whether it's got a camera or not or regardless of its weight is going to require an operator id and a flyer id okay now these are not really big big changes they're not really a massive issue at the end of the day the operator id is something that is required pretty much for everybody anywhere and ultimately the flyer id basically is an additional sort of learning program basically designed to educate the drone flyer okay so i think that's pretty much a good thing now why they can't just incorporate this sort of operator id flyer id and just call it one sort of training program registration thing i don't know but this is the way they have chosen to do it going into 2026 of course the caa have told us that we are going to get new drone labels well here in the uk we are going to get uk zero uk one uk two however for a transitional period it seems into december 2027 we are going to be able to operate using the c0 labels i'm assuming this is going to give manufacturers time namely dji i suppose enough time to send everybody out or at least apply for the uk zero or uk one or uk two label that's how i think it will work or what dji could do is like they've done with the dji mini 5 pro where they actually include a c1 label in that box if people want to actually you know lose the c0 status and fly up to that 500 meters so this might be a route dji go down they might just start putting the uk stickers on the drone itself for those supplied to the UK or indeed just print some stickers off and chuck them in the box like I've already mentioned. Now the next big talking point I know so many of you are massively against is remote ID is confirmed to be coming to the UK. In fact not only is it coming but according to this piece of text right here it is actually active as of September 2025 so essentially right now. Now any drone on the market after January 2026 is going to have to have capability. If you have a legacy drone for example that does not have remote ID built in you have up until January 2028 to make that basically remote ID compatible. You can do this by adding a remote ID module for example however naturally if you are flying a mini drone such as the Mini 2 that means additional weight, meaning you're going to have to then fly the drone further away from people. So essentially, from my point of view, to make this realistic, 
after 2028 or January 2028, most people are going to have to buy an up-to-date modern drone in the UK. Now, Remote ID is, of course, here. Now, when you registered on the CAA website for your operator ID, what's going to happen is actually during the course of today, if I pop this screenshot on the screen, you can see that the CAA are updating their website. What you need to do is go into your registration to basically pull up your details, get your operator ID and see your flyer ID. And what will happen is the CAA is actually going to list your operator ID in this section right here, but this is exactly what's happening and how you get your remote ID number to be able to enter it in your remote ID section on the DJI Fly app, okay? So that's how you get that. Now, I'm not a huge fan of remote ID. As you can see on screen, this is exactly what it's going to broadcast. You could argue that if you're doing nothing wrong and you're flying sort of within visual line of sight, then you've got nothing to hide. But for me, the idea of the fact that people can just do a quick scan and see exactly where I am and see everything on my drone, that's going to be sort of something that I'm not keen on. And not only that, but if you do accidentally forget to renew your operator ID and somebody gets it by using remote ID scanner and they can literally see your remote ID, the CAA have actually set up a separate page on their website where you can enter that operator ID to even see if somebody's operator ID is in date or invalid. That's pretty much big brother, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I cannot say I'm that happy, but it is what it is. If we want to continue flying a drone in the UK, that is what we're going to have to contend with. Now, the next one is pretty sort of... I don't even have any words for the next one. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, so, do you remember that old visual line of sight? Visual line of sight is due to change in a massive, massive new way. Because instead of the guidance now saying visual line of sight, it now says the operator, the person with the joysticks flying the drone, has to keep their drone in direct sight. What that tells me is if you are flying the drone, you have to literally watch that drone in the sky. You must be able to see its orientation. And of course, you must be able to um, see and avoid any obstacles. Tell me again how that works. If you want to actually use your camera to record shots and take photos and videos and everything else. Well, actually, the CAA have already done that with this little section right here where they say they consider flying using a screen or looking at your screen controller such as the RC2 or RC1 or your mobile phone for example. The CAA now consider that as flying FPV. Essentially, and I have actually reached out to the CAA to fact check this, but reading the drone code as it is written right now, if you want to fly your drone and you want to look at the screen to frame your shot or take a photo, according to this, you need a spotter, okay? And I've just got absolutely no words for any of this. And let's sort of expand that further because you think you see somebody with remote ID. So we've got remote ID on our drones. Literally, if anybody knows this, they can literally come up to you find you they can see that you are flying by yourself and the minute you look down at your camera if anybody knows the drone regulations that are coming into place and they're up on this they can go you are breaking the regulations you do not have your drone in direct sight if you do not have a spotter with you wow like are you serious are you actually serious? This is literally what is coming in. So now pretty much every single time I want to create some sort of content, I have to have somebody with me if I want to adjust my controller or look at my controller to make the shots. Like that is absolutely mind blowing to me. Now, like I mentioned, I have reached out to the CAA for some clarification as to whether I'm actually reading that right 
but it does appear that is the case. But of course, if you think I've completely got this wrong, please do let me know in the comment section below, but I don't think I have looking at everything here. Okay, so that is a major, major for me issue. However, it's not all bad news because now if you do have that drone that is C0 rated or C1 rated, you can now fly it in a built up area in the same way you would normally fly a sub 250 gram drone. However, of course, there has been a lot of sort of contention with the weight of the new DJI uh, Mini 5 Pro, the fact it's coming in over that 249 grams. Mine personally came in at 252 grams, but now all of that, if you're in the UK, it literally doesn't matter because we can fly all drones up to 900 grams pretty much wherever we want, okay? So that, as I mentioned in my previous videos actually, and I said it's only going to last a few months, in January you can fly it where you want, well, this is the case. You can now fly it exactly where you want, okay? So that's obviously a positive, but with the negatives of the fact that you can fly it where you want, but you're going to have to have somebody with you if you want to do anything meaningful with your drone. Now, the next thing the CAA have also mandated is the fact that you now have to have a flashing light when flying at night. Now, that's all well and good. If you are flying a drone with a built-in light, for example, you can just enable it. Now, on the DJI Mini 4 Pro, for example, when you start recording um, on your drone, basically what DJI have done is they set those flashing lights, those red and green lights, to be off, okay? Now, in the DJI Fly app, you can actually toggle them back on, but weirdly, at this current moment in time, with the DJI Mini 5 Pro, there's no way to toggle those lights to stay on when you're recording. But because the CAA specifically said that it's to help people see your drone, or indeed aircraft, well, does then that mean you need to put another strobe on the top like you do in the United States? In the US, you're supposed to put it on the top so other aircraft can see you, whereas in the UK, we've had no such requirement, to which I've always said, put the strobe or light on the bottom so it helps you and other people see it. But with this line about sort of aircraft, well, do we now have to put one on the top? You, you could argue that both ways, I suppose, okay? So again, something for you to think about. Now, in the drone code, the CAA have now gone out of their way to start talking about privacy concerns, basically highlighting that, you know, you may be capturing people in your footage and to potentially ask permission or make people aware that if they're going to be in your footage, make them aware that you are recording, okay? Now, this is something I generally personally do anyway. So, of course, when I'm filming for business or if I'm flying around the general public like when i do on these sort of shots i will generally just go up to any people that are by the side walking fishing and saying look i'm going to fly my drone it generally can see you but it can't see your face you know are you bothered and if they say yes then i will just wait until they have passed so that's something i tend to do out of courtesy but now the caa have literally mentioned it in their sort of drone code just to say that this is something that you should be aware of so this video isn't of course exhaustive it's mentioned remote id is going to be here and people can check your operator id to make sure that you've actually got one and it's in date we can fly our drones in more places okay which of course is good up to 900 grams the weight of the dji mini 5 pro being over no longer matters but if we are flying what the CAA consider FPV and looking at your screen, not even, of course, using goggles and having a spotter, not just looking at your screen, they now consider that flying FPV, meaning essentially you need a spotter with you. I'm absolutely gobsmacked at that okay so this is sort of a short video just covering the main changes and of course obviously i have to mention any drone over 100 grams is now going to require an operator id and a flyer id which i don't really see that as a bad thing okay and of course your operator id has to be labeled on the drone itself so please do let me know what you think to this video in the comment section below I think this video will possibly blow up with a huge amount of comments, okay? So I will try to reply to as many as possible. I'm a little lost for words. Like I said, there is some positives, but this whole needing a spotter, if you were looking down at your screen, I mean, how viable is that really? What does it really mean? If you go out to capture content, you can't do it by yourself. Surely that cannot be right. But 
if you read the drum code, it's sort of what it says. Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. That wraps up this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one.